Hi, I'm Stephen Myla, Principal Oboe with the Chippewa Valley Symphony, here to introduce the oboe to you. So this is the oboe. I'm going to start with my story with the instrument a little bit. I didn't find the oboe. I didn't hear a recording or a performance and say, that sounds amazing, I have to play that instrument, what is it? I went to my band director in sixth grade when I was first starting and said, I want an instrument with a challenge. And he certainly delivered. The oboe is very difficult to get started on, but if you can work through that, I think you can do some pretty amazing things with this instrument. The oboe is a woodwind instrument, and within that is a, it is a reed. So that means that all of the sound generated comes from these tiny little reeds that we stick into the tops of our instruments. The reed is two pieces of cane, two blades, tied together onto a metal tube that we stick into the top of the instrument there. And playing it alone, it just sounds like this. So you can do some funny things with it. It's a little silly buzz that is not super exciting and it's certainly not very loud that you'd want to be playing just the reed in an ensemble or anything like that. What's neat about the oboe is that it takes that buzz and amplifies it into something really beautiful. So that music is from Ennio Morricone's soundtrack for The Mission, and that particular track is called Gabriel's Oboe. The oboe is also important in an orchestral setting. It gives what's called the tuning A at the beginnings of performances and also rehearsals, just to make sure that everybody's lined up. So the next time you're at an orchestra concert, pay attention to the beginning and you'll hear everybody get really quiet and then the principal oboist will provide the A. And after the oboist starts playing the A, everyone else will slowly join in playing the A as well to make sure that all of the pitches of all the individual instruments are lined up and so that everybody can be on the same page and so that the music sounds the way it's supposed to. The oboe is also frequently featured as a solo instrument in orchestra. I'm going to use a couple of different pieces to display the range of the instrument from low up to high. We're going to start low. This is from Prokofiev's Peter and the Wolf, where the oboe plays the duck. <laughs> Moving up in the range from there, I've got Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake, the opening for that. And then moving even higher from that, I've got something from Mussorgsky's Pictures at an Exhibition. And that excerpt is from a movement called The Ballet of the Unhatched Chicks. And I can definitely get that picture of what Mussorgsky's going for seeing a little chick with its egg shell still on, with its little legs sticking out, racing around on the floor. So why do we call the oboe the oboe? So the word in English, oboe, comes to us from Italian, oboe, which in turn comes from the French, obois. And if you take obois and directly translate it into English, it means high wood. Well, the wood part of this is easy. It's made of wood. So that all makes sense. But what about high? High, you might think, would be in pitch. 
since it's a treble instrument, it plays melodies and solos frequently, but it actually is for volume. See, when the oboe was originally developed in France in the 17th century, it was much louder than the other instruments that were available. And so it was very well suited for outdoor playing, for Handel's water music, for instance, um, as well as finding an easy role as a soloist in orchestras, as I just demonstrated. So thank you for listening to me chat a little bit about the oboe today, and I look forward to seeing you soon in the audience at one of our orchestra concerts.